Hello, everybody, and welcome to a Honkai Star Rail video. Um, this video is going to be in response to a tier list that I released four days before Pure Fiction came out. Um, I've never so far in the history of my channel had to revise a tier list this fast. Um, the thing about it is. Like when it comes down to it, I should have waited for Pure Fiction to come out. Um, that's just the reality of it, uh, because that is you know a a new end game mode does shake up the tier list in ways. Like if a unit is good, is really good, in an end game mode, obviously that is going to be very good for their prospects. You know in terms of where they place in a tier list, um, as compared to you know other characters in the game. Uh, not only that, but I did not wait until Dr. Ratio came out. I've done all my tier lists kind of at the end of patches in the past. And this time I did it in the middle of a patch. So Dr. Ratio was also like 10 days from release. And Pure Fiction was like 3 days from release when I did this tier list. And it's like, I realize now that I should have waited. I'm going to be doing that in the in the future. Um, I don't know if I'm going to make a tier list for 2.0. I feel like since I did 2 tier lists just this patch, that's a little too close together. Um, to do a 2.0, I might do one at the end of 2.1. Uh, but I'm not sure because I am excited to see where Black Swan and Sparkle kind of fit in. Um, maybe if I were to do them every patch, they could be a lot shorter because usually the you know the last time I did one, uh, you know the one I did 11 days ago, I believe it went up. Um, it went up to about over an hour. It went over an hour. And the one before that was like 40 minutes. One before that was like a half an hour. These, these have been going up in how long it takes me to get through them because of, you know, every time I do them, there's like two new patches of characters in the game. This one is going to be a different story. It's just me yapping right now. But obviously, um, this tier list is not going to take long to update. OK, I just want to go over a few things. Uh, I think it moved around enough to warrant this tier list. And that is where. You know, we're going to come in and, and talk about it. So, first things first. With the release of Pure Fiction, because it is such a good mode for Iridition characters, Iridition characters across the board have acquired a, a decent amount of love. Um, and with that being said, uh, I think I'm actually going to feel safe to move Argenti up to S plus tier with uh, right behind Jing Liu. Um, I don't know if he's the best in the game now. I will have to, you know, think about that. I think Jing Liu is still the best DPS in the game, but I think Argenti is not far behind, not far behind at all. Um, after that, uh, I think I underplaced Ting Yun. I think she at least goes up one. I think she's at least above Welt, um, arguably also above Blade. Uh, I, think I, I think I am willing to do that. I think I'm actually willing to put her at the top of S tier. You know? It's just, you know, Dr. Ratio is just one more character that has been added, and he will find his place in the tier list too, uh, that she is really well with. Like, she does, she is an insane support. She is good with almost every character in the game. Every character who especially loves casting their alt. In pure fiction, she's actually a pretty decent harmony character. Um, because she helps you get your alts off more often. And there are, you know, the buffs that have to do with your alt. And, you know, using your alt, giving them all, giving all the enemies an additional point of, you know, the damage they deal to their surrounding uh, allies whenever they die I think her importance has just gone up even further in the game and I'm willing to put her at, at as the premier unit at the top of S tier um, I just don't know if she's on the level of the S pluses um, this is a very 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 elite group I just don't know uh, but I'm willing to put her there Pela is a character that comes up a bit because especially with I mean I think I've maybe underrated her a bit before 
but also now with the addition of Dr. Ratio. And also she's another character with a pretty good AoE ultimate that also reduces their defense. Um, she is also really good in pure fiction. Um, she's one of the best, you know, sub DPSs for pure fiction. She's a really good debuffer. Uh, she's an insane character. And that's really good for Dr. Ratio, really good for pure fiction. We love to see that. Uh, I think I can, I'm going to move up Silverwolf one place above Jepard. Uh, I'm still debating on, you know, what to do here. She is very single target focus. So this isn't about pure fiction. This is about how she interacts with, you know, the new DPS Dr. Ratio in the game. Um, Jepard is also really good with him uh, because he can apply debuffs. But I more mean Silverwolf on her own to a single target, which is you know what Doctor Ratio hits, applies like so many different debuffs. So many she can apply three different debuffs with the one ability, where it's like she gives enemies um the one of three random uh, debuffs, and so she can put like three different debuffs there. Um, her break her. Whenever she puts a weakness, like the weakness that the enemy doesn't have on them, that is considered a debuff. Like if she just places the imaginary weakness on someone. Um, and then obviously that's double synergy with Dr. Ratio. She can pretty much make sure that his follow-up attack always goes off just on her own. And um, because she applies enough debuffs just by herself. Um, at least in a single target uh, universe. Dr. Ratio, I'm having a hard time because I want to put him as above Jing Yuan, which would make him a top 5 DPS in the game. I think that is actually true. What is crazy about that, by the way, is the fact that Jing Yuan had a whole mode that came out that is better for him, but I feel like he kind of stayed where he is. And the reason he's going to stay where he is is because I kind of believe that I may have slightly overrated him before. I'm not sure, though, because I think that he's right in front of Kafka, but I think that they're both above the characters back here. Like, I think they're, they are both above, at least now, at least if they weren't before. Jing Yuan, at least, is definitely above, you know, Asta, Topaz, QQ, who I believe moves up, right? I don't know. Because Topaz also moves up because of the fact that just one more insane follow-up character in the game. I think he he might be able, he, he's probably the character that props his follow-up attack more than anyone else in the game now, I would imagine, as long as you know you, you can debuff them. Um, and you have him in, you know, at least taking two turns per turn with a decent amount of speed, and you maybe have an energy recharge rope on him, he easily clears as the most, you know, follow-up attack proccing character in the game, and Topaz is the character that directly buffs off of that. So he can be main DPS, Topaz sub DPS, uh, but then that also leaves you with like, but wait, who's going to riddle them with debuffs? Wohua is actually insanely good with him. And it's like Luocha has the AoE ultimate, so he's pretty good. Um, but I think Huohua actually does overtake Luocha. As you can see, guys, this is how the tier list works in my mind. Um, I'm kind of I'm kind of giving you a a peek into my brain of how the tier list actually works, right? When an, every time a new character is 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 added. Depending on how well it synergizes with other characters, that is just one more character that another character is good with interacting with, and one more team that can be built that helps a specific character, such as Topaz or Silverwolf, who work insanely well with Dr. Ratio, and because of that, they actually do either stay where they are or move up in the tier list, and then other people who don't interact as well um with them can sometimes move down or you know trade places with them and the reason why that is is because this tier list i've said it many times it's not based on how well they can do moc specifically it's not based on how well they do you know um 
pure fiction, actually, uh, specifically. It's not how well they do Sim Uni. It's not how well they can do Swarm or, you know, Golden Gears or things like that. But these are all endgame modes. And I feel like if you can be a jack of all trades really good in all of those different things, such as a character like Jing Liu or Genti, you are going to have a high spot on this tier list as a DPS. If you can fit into almost any team comp and you are an insane buffing character, as you can see, that lands you a pretty high spot in the tier list. Here. Um, the more DPS characters that come out that are just obliterating your skill points, characters like Hanya and Sparkle when she comes out are actually, they just become more viable. There are more situations where they are good because there are more characters, there are more characters in the game that they fit really well with. I don't think the game has enough super hungry skill point eaters to warrant Hanya being much higher than she is, although I do believe that I did underrate her, um, looking more into her, and I am willing to at least move her up, I think, two tiers. I think when another DPS comes, at least one more that eats skill points the way QQ and Don Hung uh, IL do, that's whenever she will probably break into the A tier, maybe like right above Zila, I could see, depending on like how well she works. Um, but yeah, that's kind of like the, the peak into my mind. Um, so when so something as simple as one new mode getting released, which is actually, you know, causes more shakeup than not, but a new one new character being released, especially when it's free, and I can guarantee you that he is on every account in the game right now, that actually does add a little bit more weight than just any new character, but not much, because I don't want to think of it that way, you know? Um, but, yeah, I mean, like, everyone in the game, everyone who plays Honkai Star Rail, has a Doctor Ratio right now. Obviously, he is, people can, if you want to build an entire account around him, you kind of can. At least, I mean, I mean, if you're, like, just starting out, you claim your Doctor Ratio, he's your only legendary for a while until you get, like, the guaranteed one off the standard banner pulls that you get, um, off, like, the 50 banner pulls, uh, you know, new characters have it really good. Okay. But anyway, you know, that's just what I'm saying. So like when a new character like Dr. Ratio comes out, who is by far the, the best character in the entire game at procking his follow-up attack in an insane amount of times, insane amount of times, uh, then characters like Topaz really do kind of move up in the world. When pure fiction comes out and characters who have AOE ultimates, even though they're more supportive, like, um, do any Harmony characters? I don't think any Harmony characters have AOE damage ultimates. Hmm. I don't know. But, like, you know, supportive type characters like Hela, um, move up, and Asta might actually just stay where she is while someone moves ahead of her. Kind of like what just happened with Topaz. Um, when new gear sets are added, that is also a huge indirect buff to every character in the game who synergizes well with that gear set. So I just wanted to kind of go over that, um, you know, kind of start rambling in the middle of this tier list. Um, but anyway, let's try and get back to it. Okay. Someone said in my last video, QQ above Zilla is weird champ. Um, I mean, not exactly their words. I did say right above Zilla, like just barely. And the reason is because of Okay, well, before I really didn't have that big great of an excuse, I think this one I kind of cheated in a way because I was thinking about Pure Fiction was just around the corner, like three days away when I did this. Um, so I kind of took into consideration Pure Fiction before I did this, uh, but that's like the only change I did that to. That's why I'm going back and changing things now. Um, and Himiko, too. Himiko is pretty decent where she is. Um, I think Kimiko actually does move up to A. And maybe Clara moves down to B. I think I'm happy with that. Um, yeah, anyway. Um, yeah, so I, I think just because Pure Fiction is added, and I know Zilla because the, the little enemies are so squishy, she can actually get resets and do decent 
It's just that obviously a character like QQ who can just hit them all and kill all of them, especially when she's alting an AoE alt, is just going to perform better than her. All right? And let's be honest, it's been a long time since people have been talking about Zilla comps in uh in pure in in memory of chaos this could actually change again but also they're both quantum so i don't know this could change again when sparkle comes out and she is a quantum harmony and you can actually go mono quantum with a you know with a fushuan sparkle and then a dps and a sub dps or a deep debuffer like uh like silver wolf Okay, so this could actually change again. Honestly, they could both move up with the mono quantum option, you know, the mono quantum with a harmony character option unlocked. So, yeah, Himiko does move up above Clara, in my opinion. Um, not that Clara specifically moves down, like, Clara didn't get worse per se. I just feel like I want to switch where they are um, because of pure fiction mostly. Um, yeah, and I think Hanya might actually be a little more valuable than Kara. I'll do it. I feel really bad for Kara, but I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. Um, I feel like my my QQ and Don Hung Il enjoyers are gonna appreciate that. Um, let's move on. Um, who else comes up for moves? This was a mistake. I think Yukong is definitely above the Fire Trailblazer. I don't really know why I put her there. Uh, I do think that that would be true. Problem is, I think Herda, I think Serval move, moved up above, maybe just above Natasha. I was going to put him above Sampo, but I feel like Sampo is still used against you know with kafka i feel like sampo will his value will go far down not far down but like down a little bit when black swan comes up because nobody's putting sampo on their team when black swan is an option okay and you only put sampo on your team if you pull in kafka and if you have kafka why on the planet why one reason would you ever choose him over just pulling like, like why would you ever choose sampo over just you know saving your pulls for a black swan if you have uh kafka go for black swan 100 percent. i'm not shitting you guys go for black swan if you can get her get her if you can do it right and even if you don't have like enough pulls i would just pull on the banner no matter what even if you don't have enough to like guarantee that you get her just because like if you you know you need the chance to get her i think Black Swan is an all or nothing character. Like you go all in with all your jades and all your warps if you have Kafka. Okay. Because I think that character, I think Black Swan is going to really, really make Kafka teams. It's like summoning Exodia, really, when you have Kafka and Black Swan. I feel like that that's what it's gonna feel like. Um, and I feel like Kafka might actually move above uh I feel like Kafka will move above Jing Yuan when Black Swan comes out. And maybe also above Dr. Ratio. Just because her value is going to go up a shitload. Um, because Black Swan will probably end up in S tier. I, listen guys. I don't know. I don't know for sure. I don't know why I'm talking about this. This is a different conversation. Okay. Next. One I really wanted to do ever since Pure Fiction came out. Was take Herda. From the third worst character in the game. I genuinely believe this. To B tier above Shushang. I think that if you are a brand new player, as long as Pure Fiction stays as the as the uh, AOE mode that actually gives Iridition characters a place in the game, as long as that stays the same, and if it doesn't, I guess we'll move her down again. Um, but if that stays the same, I feel like Herda will just continue to be. A better four star to invest into in the early game whenever you get her free 
especially because you get all of our Eidolons for free once you do a simulated world. Um, <clears throat> when you do some uni. Then Shusheng. Because Shusheng does not have free-to-play Eidolons. I don't know if you actually get her free-to-play at all, now that I think about it. You get her to free-to-play, you get all of her Eidolons. I think that she actually has a much better place in the game now. So all you Herda enjoys are really going to like that. I kind of want to trim some fat up in these C and D tiers. I'm going to move Don Hong down to F. I think I'm okay with that. I just think that Don Hong, regular Don Hong, will almost never have a place in the game again. And you guys just wait till we get our next five star fire DPS, right? One that's actually better than Himiko or not so reliant on having follow up characters like Topaz. And you will watch Hook go down there as well. You'll will, you will watch Hook fall. But not yet. Not yet. I think, I think I'm happy with this tier list. So I'm going to say the Fire MC has actually been getting a decent amount of... A decent amount. I think actually this might have been right to do in the last tier list. And then I would just be going back to doing this. Going back to like Fire MC at the top of C tier again. I think it was a mistake to have Fire MC above Yukong, but I think it is not a mistake to have Fire MC above Yukong now because she has that AoE ultimate, and a lot of people have been actually using her uh, for the game. Um, I'm actually going to move Shu Shang down because if I'm being honest with myself, if Luca doesn't have a, you know, if if, if I'm saying Luca is down here then Shusheng probably definitely has to come down here. Okay? And I think Fire MC might just be above Shusheng. And this really hurts me to do, because I loved Shusheng so much. I, I did build her up to, like, level 70. Um, she was my main physical character, you know, DPS, before I got Clara. And even now, I just kind of don't use physical. Like, if I have... If I'm fighting a physical enemy, I use like something else because I didn't pull for Argenti. I might re-pull on his banner, or I might just wait for a better physical. But like when I'm considering the character S plus tier, it's like why would I not want to have them? And I'm also feeling that for Hoha. Like, why would I not? I feel like maybe I just why would I not have pulled for Hoha? And it's because I already have two preservation characters. And I feel like if I did pull for Ho Ho, then um, Luocha would almost never see play. Which is really upsetting. But I almost think that it's, it's something that I should do. So, are we happy with this list? Am I happy with this list? Let's see. I think I am. I think I am. Um. Yeah. Do I really believe that Herda is actually a lower value than a Yang Ching? Which, if you pull a Yang Ching, you you gotta just think to yourself, what situation am I ever gonna use this character? Really, like especially if I'm building a Herda for an actual piece of endgame content. Um, if I'm actually investing in a Herda for that. I almost want to put her above her, and I definitely want to put her above Bayou. Crazy. Is that not crazy? I think Bayou's ahead of her. I, I'm thinking in the way that, like, you have two of these three characters in the S plus tier. I should not be thinking that way. Um, or at least the links. I believe it's very reasonable to say most characters or most people have a Lynx because you know, we got it for free. Go and copy of Lynx for free. But um, have one of these as well. Luocha, Hoho, or Ushuan, or Japard. So I actually do think maybe it's, it's okay to put her to a Bayou. All right. That is going to be the list. Not quite ready to put her above Gu 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 Gwenaifen yet until Black Swan comes out. Because I feel like Black Swan will just always be the sub-DPS to, to Kafka. And 
there's almost no situation where it wouldn't be. So characters like Winiafin, Sampo, um, Serval, Luca, characters that were often being used with Kafka are going to go down. Uh, everyone else who was used with Kafka, I mean, is going to go down when Black Swan comes out. Anyway, that's enough rambling for me today. Um, 25 minute update tier list. Uh, I think this is good. I can try to do them this fast in future updates. It's just the thing whenever I'm doing them in future updates, I have more than one character to put about, to put in and like to find a place for them and to think about. Um, I usually have like three, sometimes six, because I usually do it every two patches. I have like six characters to put in their spots. Uh, and like in two patches, new modes come out, new difficulties for things come out, things like that, because Honkai Star Rail is a train that just keeps moving. And we love to see that. So things can change and things probably will change, but not yet. Not right now. If you like the video, like the video. If you dislike it, dislike it. But I'm not going to waste any more of your time. Have a beautiful snowy day if it's snowing where you are. Um, peace. Subscribe.